Right, this is lecture three on Fourier series, and it's just a quick thing on Parseval's theorem. Now, what I did for this, uh, there was only one question that I could find for it, so I've used that one. It's from the assignment, so I might have to unload this YouTube video next year, but it gives me a whole year to use it. Uh, so let's have a look. First off, uh, I don't know if this is a bit blurry. Parseval's theorem is this. So we have uh, 1 over pi from times the integral of between pi and minus pi of f of t squared uh, dt equals a naught squared over 2 plus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a n squared plus b n squared. And this is the sum of all this. So, now this can be derived from the normal Fourier series equation, and that's where all these a noughts and a n's and b n's come from. They're just from the normal Fourier series equation, uh, lecture one. Um, and all you do is you add in the integral signs, and the co where there's normally cosines and sines, We've just squared things to the squares, so cosine squared plus sine squared is 1, so they kind of disappear, and you can kind of see where it's coming from. Right now, let's have a question. Right. Use Parseval's theorem with a function uh, t squared to evaluate this. So this is the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 4. Now that won't make sense now, but let's just use the Parseval's theorem with t squared. First off, we have uh, this, we'll do the left hand side first. So we have the uh, 1 over pi times integral from pi to minus pi of f, f of t squared. So we do t to the 4, because t squared squared is t to the 4, we multiply. Uh, and that will give you the answer, 2 pi to the 4 over 5. Now, you're probably wondering, where the, uh, like I did just first, where did the 5 go? But that's because it goes up to a 5, and then uh, we have a minus, minus pi, and that will change uh, to uh, 2 pi to the 5 over 5, and we've got the 1 over pi here, so that's correct. Next thing we want to do, we want to find a naught bn and a n. So uh, I'm not going to go through all this working because it's quite long and tedious but we've got the a n here which is t squared cosine n t, Noth nothing changed there, we've got the one over, uh, one over pi and the integral pi minus pi as well, nothing's changed there. But you're not aware this is the chain rule which is the uh, u dv dx equals u v minus integral uh, v du dx. Yep, if you, if you don't remember that. Uh, do a lot of working and you will end up with the answer 4 times minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n squared. Yeah? That's fine. And the other one we need is a naught. Uh, I'll, I'll just explain that minus one. Uh, the minus one, we have the cosine nt. You'll get that along, on, along your travels. The sines will cancel because uh, so sine n pi, any multiple of pi in a sine, unless it's uh, any natural multiple, I should say. Um, that's always going to be zero. The cosines, however, it be minus one or one, depending if it's uh, pi or two pi or three pi or zero. So, so look. the a naught uh, is one over pi times integral from pi to minus pi of t, t squared dt. You should remember that as well. That's the same equation uh, as the Fourier series, and we have two. This will equal to two pi squared over three. So we have our a n and a naught. Now b n we don't actually need. Because if you think about the graph of t squared, it's a, a v. Now, sine squared, that starts up here and goes down like that. So, And what we, we use uh, the Fourier series to 
estimate the line. So if we have like a view like this, the closest thing to that is going to be a cosine, because it's going to go uh, down to zero, sort of start in zero maybe. You start in zero and go curve like that. So it will. It's more likely to follow the line because because of the general curve along zero. If that kind of makes sense. In my head, it did. <laughs> right. Continued. So now we have this. Remember, we got this from our uh, integral of f of t squared, and this is our a naught squared, uh, half of it, so it puts over two, uh, and we've got our sum here of a n squared. Now this is this is all squared, all squared there. All right. Now let's have a look at this side. We have uh, it'll be four pi to the four over 9, we have the 2, so we have 2 pi to the 4 over 9. Let's have a look at this. What we've got here, well, uh, this, this is, well, this is everything actually, this is the whole thing squared. I'm pretty sure I put brackets there. Um, so, we have, well, this will become an n to the 4 for starters. This will become 16 minus 1, now, the, to the n. Now, because we're squaring this, we multiply it, so we have minus 1 to the 2n. And what can we tell about 2n? That it's always going to be even, because we've got n from 1 to infinity. Uh, it will always be even, and if uh, minus 1 to the power of anything even is always going to be 1. So we can change that to 16 over n to the 4. Now, what did we want in our uh, question? We wanted 1 over n to the 4. So what we can do, we just move the 16 outside. Yeah. So we have 2 pi to the 4 over 9 plus 16, the sum from n, n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 4. Now, and that, that equals this, uh, 2 pi to the 4 over 5, uh, right, with our possible sphere. Now, we, if you want it in terms of this, we just have to do a bit of rearranging, which is quite simple. So we have this minus that divided by 16, and that will give you that. Yep. Oh, that's a bit stretched. Because uh, uh, I just copied this off the assignment. Because there's a lot of writing and all these sum things, and it just gets very tricky. Uh, and we're coming to the end as well, so I need to get it all done before I finish. Uh, one over n to the four equals uh, six. Uh, this minus that, which equals pi to the four over ninety. And what does this tell us? This tells us that this actually converges. It converges to the limit pi to the 4 over 90. So it doesn't go on forever. Unlike some things which we did in calculus, uh, 1 over n can actually go to infinity, the sum. And that's it.